still can't believe that's your emergency manual over. Hey there, welcome to Insomniac Live, and uh, we're here with the special guest today. You all know him, it's Ted Price. And uh, it's, you know, short holiday week, but we wanted to play a little Marvel action. Yeah. So Lego Marvel Super Heroes 2 just came out last week from Traveler's Tales and Marvel Games. And so Ted and I are going to co-op. Uh, as much as we can, and hopefully we don't look really stupid, dying a lot, or not being able to figure things out in a Lego video game. Uh, two brains are better than one. Yeah, so. yeah, and a chat, please help us out if you if you see us struggling, because we might. Um, so we literally have just started the game, and we are... Oh, okay, we both we, had to stand on the platform. Yeah, we appear to be yeah. in, uh, in a ship, and we are trying to... Oh, you run full. Death, I think. Oh, yeah. I, oh, you... Yeah, we went down the elevator. We went down... Oh. I okay. Do okay. You, you brought me with you here. So I'm saying, well, I'm Gamora, by the way. Why is there reinforcement? You're saying, well, I don't know, something about Groot pressing buttons. Yeah, Groot's always pressing the buttons. Something with this mine over here. There we go. If you. Oh, you that'll that? be useful if we need to help. Oh, okay. Gravity mine can be thrown, but okay. All right. Okay, gravity mine appears to be important in this. Oh, hey, look, I'm green. I'm. You were lifting me up on it. Thank you. Am I? Am I? Did I lift you up? Or wait, wait a second. I didn't do anything. Okay, well I I will go back down. Oh, um, it came back down. Yeah. There you go. All right. So that's, just really smart stuff. So that's one of my favorite parts of the Lego games is just destroying everything. And you always get something for destroying. Yeah, it reminds me a lot of like blasting everything in Ratchet with just like Lego pieces flying everywhere and all the bolts. Yeah. And all that. Wait, maybe I should shoot the gravity mine. Right there. there it was. Oh. I had to shoot it. You hold down square to like shoot stuff. Okay. Now, did you have that equipped? Oh, did we both have a gravity mine equipped? I don't. I think I shot the gravity mine, which is what let us do it. Whereas I think if you hold down square, you have like a gun, or you can like you can target stuff and lock on. Oh, that was loud. I think, uh, your building. I think it was the. I think it was the kitchen delivery next door. That's my guess. There's so much food. Yep. Yeah. Uh, hey everybody! I saw Silent, Silent Tremor says Ted. Amazing Spider-Man says I love this game. Uh, hi, that random user twenty four. Hey Zeke Fergie. Um, uh, Nick Bates Live said, Hey, do you guys know Exum? He's speedrunning the original Ratchet and Clank games. And if you do know him, what do you think of speedrunning? Yeah, we know a lot of speedrunners. We even retweeted someone who's yeah. speedrunning the PS4 game yesterday. I, it, it's an art. I mean, the patience that it takes to figure out what you have to do is immense. And uh, I gotta say, sometimes the, the, the numbers that I see seem impossible. Like 20 minutes to the original yeah. attack length? I mean, when we were making that game and testing it and just playing through just to see how the design was, no way I could imagine getting through it in 20 minutes, but some people are much more skilled than I am. So. They also figured out ways to break all the stuff that's in the game in insane ways that you would have never imagined. True. I do remember the rising water challenge in Ratchet. When you're going through the sewers, I think it was Blackwater City, Right. Uh, there was a bug where you could get infinite bolts. Mm. And I think that was actually, uh, and we released it with that bug. I believe. Yeah, I think that's right. And, uh, yeah, so people got to line up pretty quickly as a result. Okay, so what are we doing here? We're looking out for Kang's forces, apparently. Um, hey, James. Yeah. Can you double check it's on 720? Sure. Hang so, on, guys. So while you're checking the uh, settings here, uh, I am sitting in for Brian Intahar today, who is unfortunately not able to join us. Yeah, you you know you guys have had a whole thing about crashing each other's shows, and not only did you crash his show, you just took over his show today. Well, so. I might have locked him in some office somewhere. Is, is that just what happened? He's yeah, like, I mean, I, you never know. He's gonna come storming in here at some point when someone finally lets him out. Uh, <laughs> yep, it was on automatic. All right, we've now corrected our resolution issue. Yeah, sorry about that, everybody. Okay, Watch. one sec. I gotta switch it here. One Watching second. at home. So. As far as what we're doing in the game here, we've escaped from a, a crashing ship, I think. Yeah. The ship actually crashed, but we managed to survive because we're Lego characters. And that's good. Yeah. And we are now searching for something. Did you catch what we're searching for? Uh, I think there's bad guys in the city, and we're now helping out. Got it. Uh, so cleaning and cleaning like, up the city. Yeah. If you hold down square, that lets you like do your. I think like lets you shoot your gun. Maybe. Oh yeah. Here's and then my you gun. Can, like you can highlight stuff. And I see you. I'm gonna shoot you. No wait. Did not shoot you. I just like breaking things. Uh, uh, you did something. Chaos everywhere. 
It's not looking good. There's chaos everywhere. These civilians aren't going to go anywhere unless we put those fires out. I should be a voice actor. Yep. Perhaps there's something on the... Yep. Dude, you're going to voice act the whole thing. You're going to do Gamora's voice I, acting from now on? I would, yes. Right. <laughs> I could do it. I could totally do it. <laughs> uh, I'll be... Uh, I think Drax. Drax would be good. He'd be, let's get switch to Drax. Wait, who's that? Oh, wait. Oh, I yeah, switched away. Star-Lord's getting hit by some guy with like a Ronald McDonald afro. So if I'm Drax, I gotta be philosophical and yeah, and and right. very uh, and like very straight to the point and with no thing. Ricky I Jedi said, so "Are you guys giving me a PSX 2017?" Uh, that's what the PlayStation blog says, and the PlayStation blog doesn't lie. So there you are. So I found this. Oh, okay. So I I'm over by the flames. I clearly I cannot get. That. I did I did a wall jump up that thing. Oh, and now I'm like flying around with my jetpack, and I'm not even really sure how I. Oh, I can go. Did up you my get past the fire? You no no that you can do a wall jump back oh, and forth like okay, classic okay. wall jump style. I'm working on it. Oh man, my I don't know how I got my jetpack to start oh, with. But I'm on the ground. Oh yeah, see those are Ronald McDonald dudes. Yeah. What? It's just that Ronald McDonald afro. It's so. That funny. is really weird. I don't remember that from the movies. I'm it's probably to... actually some Marvel character that I don't know, and people are probably yelling at me in the chat about it. But I just I see that afro. Uh, I'm trying to do wall jump, and I'm just failing miserably. Yeah. Well, maybe jumping, maybe it's a Star Lord thing because maybe... it's my. Uh... Let me try it. Gamora. All right. Oh, see, like I can actually like I can jetpack everywhere. Really? Yeah, that's sweet. Oh, check this out. You win. I fly around. Yeah. Maybe and I you can get, put the flames can you get out. Get past the flames. I don't know. Let's see. Can I fly around past it? Right, so. While you work in the flames, I'm gonna go find something else. Oh, I'm gonna go down here. All right. Oh, and I just blew up into a lot of little bolts. Uh, Barry Fox, this is I know the Durham office. It has people at EGGC, which is uh, oh god, what is it? East Coast? Is it East Coast Gaming Conference? I think that's right. ECGC. Yeah. Uh, but is anyone from the Burbank office out there? I don't think anyone from the Burbank office yeah. came out this year. Uh, occasionally people have, but usually it's just folks from the Durham studio that go support that. It is a really cool setup, though. Uh, Tim, who's out there, sent us a video of the whole. Uh, oh, and he set. was at IEM. He was. Oh, at was IEM. IEM. Oh, yeah, that was the uh, that was the because uh, ECGC's in Durham, but IEM was the big. Um, uh, oh, that's right. So this the, I'm getting my conferences wrong. Yeah, we were. We also were at. We had some folks at the uh, East Coast Gaming or the uh, IEM uh, Oakland, which had a unspoken uh, tournament as part of it and had some really cool finals. You can check those finals out if you want to watch the unspoken. Uh, oh, Amazing Spider-Man says you're trying to save Xandar from Kang the Conqueror. Thank you. Okay. So those. So now we're in Xandar, which oh, is... Getting... You're getting mobbed, and I don't know where you are. Cause oh, I, I, I think I died, actually. Oh, uh, well. The good news is death is very impermanent in LEGO games. Yes. So there's a few... Uh... See, now I just killed a guy with an Indiana Jones hat. So it's like Ronald McDonald and Indiana Jones. Just a little strange. I love it. Yeah. Let's see. Do you think, uh... Does Disney have a race to Indiana Jones? Yeah, they do. Okay. Yeah, when they bought Lucasfilm, they got the race to Indiana Jones. Right. I Actually, that was I'm film. fairly confident that the whole deal to get Harrison Ford back, there was two terms of the deal, basically, besides paving a lot of money. One was you have to kill Han Solo, which they... <laughs> I hope you've all seen Force Awakens. What? <laughs> My bad if you haven't. Uh... I don't know if this will fall out of the way or not, but it did give me a lot of coins. Uh, I'm just killing all or studs? I think it's studs. Uh, like and the other was you have to make Indiana Jones 5, which Steven Spielberg is working on with um, Frank Darabont and other folks. So, And I think George Lucas is actually still involved with Indiana Jones 5. You know, I, I just, for whatever reason, I didn't think of Indiana Jones, the Disney, like Marvel, I'm sorry, uh, Lucas Arts. Lucas a Lucas film, film. yep. IP, but yeah. Yep. He produced it. He... Oh, look at this. This is an interesting solution to invisible walls. At least they show you there's invisible Oh, yeah. Because they do have all those walls. And, um, like, that makes sense in the LEGO world yeah. that there be walls like that. But it's great they show you. I mean, this is one of the, that's one of the debates we have in games in general is how do, you, how do you bound players in a reasonable way? And if you can't be reasonable about it, how do you at least show them? So you don't feel cheated right. as a player. Yeah. Sunset, we had the nice solution of the invisible walls just being very um, overt. Oh, yeah. I mean, kind of like here. Here you can you can see them. I'm getting shot down by this like thing in the sky, and I just got killed. Really? I'm uh, I'm just flying around shooting things. Oh. Yeah. There's some like big ship up here that's shooting at me. I see. I spoke too soon. There's an invisible wall that I can't see. All right. All so right. that's not cool. I don't know why. That's 
inconsistent. Or maybe I maybe there's some other reason I can't. Do it. Yeah, the flying ability is always tough when you let characters fly. Like it's hard to. It is. Yeah, it's, it's a hard thing to deal with. It's one of those one of those uh, designers' dilemmas because flying is really fun pretty much in, in every game. But there's a limit to what you can draw. You certainly can't can't have infinite worlds either. Yeah. So you got to make it, if you can figure out how to make it plausible, the reason that you can't go too far, maybe your jetpack runs out of fuel, or... You know, yeah, that was always the solve for the Ratchet games, just having those jetpack refueling stations. Yeah. Oh, or the, or the Visibomb, actually, was yeah. one of my favorites, because we would just, you get out of range, and the screen would total static. Uh, that random user 24, did the people who use Skylanders ask for permission to use Spyro? Well, they didn't really have to, because Activision owns Spyro. That yeah. whole that whole transition was interesting because when we worked with Universal, it was just Universal, and then uh, there was Vivendi and some other things that happened, and eventually everybody seemed to merge into one mega corporation: the Blizzard and Activision and Vivendi and probably five or six other companies. Anyway, Spyro ended up with Activision, you know? and Skylanders was born, and it's done very well. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. But I don't think anyone like would come and be like, "Can we have permission?" They just they, they own the characters, so they can kind of. Well, that was you know that was part of the deal when we were making Spyro. Is we had a deal with Universal Interactive Studios, and they were funding, they funded Disruptor, they funded the first three Spyro games, and they owned the IP because right. they funded it. At least yeah. that was the deal we struck. Yeah. That doesn't always have to be right. the deal that you strike. Or right. Certainly, Sunset Overdrive it was not yep. the case. But yep. We own the. We own that IP and all the Oculus uh, IP or all the Oculus games we made. We own those IPs as well. Song of the Deep. Yep, Song of the Deep. Just, uh, just okay. it, you need Star Lord to hold down a button over by that park four wall. Oh, I see. Way back when we at the very beginning, huh? Okay, so you are not Star Lord right now. I'll, I'll find Star Lord. Okay, all I was, right. I was playing it for a while. I think we ran past that button and then we ended up way further than we needed to be. Let's see. This is a pretty interesting level design. I mean, it's so open and with no real direction. Oh, this is the beginning of the level, isn't it? Okay. All right. Now I know where I'm going. Thank you for the help there. Uh, I mean, it's a, it's a pretty interesting balance between just being able to destroy everything and then feeling like you're Oh, I see. Going is it, is it this button right here? Oh, here. There's a ladder for you. Oh, thank there's you. There's the ladder. So if you come all the way back all to... Right. That thing I thought I I thought I wall jumped up it, but I must have just jetpacked up it. That's the problem when I'm always glancing over at the chat. Uh, remaster resistance. So I take Marvel as the topic of the day in Sonic. Oh, not necessarily. You know, just the game came out. We wanted to play it because you know it's fun to play Marvel games, and we're working on a Marvel games. So it's always really exciting to. Oh, now you can jump up over here. Oh my! Oh, oh yeah, it failed. Oh well. Oh, at least I hit the button. I don't have to stand on it. So maybe if you come up here, we can blow our way through this. Okay. So. Or maybe this this red button. You too. want? Do we need to go up here? Yeah. There's right. something with this red button. I don't know if one of us has an sure. ability to hit it. Maybe. Maybe uh, Gamora. I saw she had a, some sort of targeting ability. Uh, that's not it. I see red buttons now. And I'm like, okay, if it's red. Now, that was what our friend on chat told us here? Yeah, or maybe now it's this wall. Let's oh, see. Was triangle. What was the triangle thing? No, that was me switching. Let's switch the multiple. Oh, there it is. Oh. There's, uh, Drax could bust through that. I don't nice. know if there's anything back here, but Drax can yep. bust through. There was a switch. There. Oh, yes. Did that open nope. the door? Nope, but there's another switch. Okay. Oh. Wait, are you Drax? I, I just, okay. Yeah, I'm not there Drax. I switched to Drax. That opened Bingo. the door. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, we figured it out. Okay, now we have a... That did it. Now we've got our very fire extinguishing drone. drone. Yay! Now we can go through the flames. All right. Are you are you going to go? No. No. no I think it, I think it just probably automatically puts out the Lego flames for us. Yeah. Uh, I saw Rick Jed. Rick Jed. Rick Jed. I saw some someone uh, with a name something like that is not on my screen anymore. But said something about his when will Brian be on the show again? Well, he wasn't going to be here today. Given the chance of him crashing because Ted is here, you never know if he might break out of the closet and just show up. But Ted locked him in a closet to steal his slot today, so we'll have to see if he He's finds his be way out. Really angry. He's gonna pick me up and throw me out. Now there. the question is, if you lock someone in a closet in Insomniac, do you have to design it like an escape room? Does it need to be like a really well designed closet, or can you just lock them in a normal like broom closet or something? I, like that? Well, I think that's a good point. You know, it, it, we, we value creativity here, right? So it has to be something that inspires innovative solutions. Right. I think yeah. instead of brute force, right. brute force not the way to develop games. Yeah. Creative solutions, That's the way. 
See, I want to know. I, yeah, I like things. the I like the philosophy there. I, I think you can get in this. I think this is like a giant oh. hamster ball. All right, somebody's in it. Directly. I'm in it. Oh, oh wait, there oh, we go. There yes, ha ha. Yes, I am inside a giant ball. This is amazing. Ha 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 ha. That's pretty cool. There's my voice acting now, you, of Drax. You get to do it. I don't. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Oh, is that Cassie? You weren't controlling that way. No, uh, I don't really know. I was pretending to control it if I wasn't. How's that? Okay. Like I was definitely pressing the stick. Okay. I like how we ran through all this stuff we weren't even supposed to see. Okay, I need to shoot that. That's one of those gravity mines, and if you shoot it, it causes big... How do you know we weren't supposed to see it? Or, well, I mean, like, uh, well, I guess we could have gotten ahead of it. We just got ahead of, uh... Sorry, I'm reading. Gravity uh, mines can be thrown, thrown by pressing... Oh, sorry. <laughs> That's okay. I, I, <laughs> I trust that you know what you're doing. I think you <laughs> shoot it, right? I, I feel like I shot one before. I, I'm... I've... Oh, you know what? I, you're Star-Lord. Maybe if you oh. hold down square and shoot it... Uh, okay, I gotta hold down square and shoot it. All right, here we go. Maybe you can Good. target it. There, there it is. Go. Okay. And that blows all that stuff down. And now we can, maybe we can rebuild. Uh, or we can just go up here and open this door. Oh, right. I think it may take two of us, though. All right, ready. Oh, okay, you did... Wait. Press circle. X? Circle. I think it's circle. I was pressing circle. Okay, got it. No, I'm listening to music. Circle seems to make me put on my headphones and listen to 80s music. I think those are people that are trapped, right? Maybe yeah. Maybe I target it. Let me just... Bust it. In doubt, break it. Oh, I got a triangle. No, that's... Switch characters. Oh, there we go. Oh, Ronald McDonald's back. Yep, yeah, alright, cool, we got it. Uh, that random user in Somniac had played all the Ratchet and Clank games, but and it was only last year I found out you made the games. Well, okay. I'm, glad, right. you, I'm glad you figured it out. Better late than never. Who I, I'd like to know who he or she thought made the games. Yeah, who did, random user, who did you think made the games? Did you think it was someone in particular, or... Maybe we can't do anything. What I, mash yeah. circle. Mash oh, mash. mash circle. I saw a circle. Mashing, there mashing. it is. Oh, okay. Ah. Nice. It was Drax. Attention to Amazing Spider-Man. They know everything. Yeah, thanks, Amazing Spider-Man. You're our hero. So, but from a design perspective, did you see anything that in indicated? You might have mashes? heard it. it. Like us not being able to hear is probably. Huh. It's probably part of it too. Okay. Like not being able to hear. Like, like there could be an audio cue. Like I'm like I think I pressed it. Hmm. Let's see. Uh, Barry Fox says you should go to ECGC this year. He'd probably cry if he, he saw you in person. Talking to you or me? You. Definitely you. No okay. one cry if he saw me in person. I don't know, James. You're pretty... You're I, I'm, I'm a vocal romantic, romantic responsive. <laughs> it's the beard. It's yeah. all about the beard. All right, Rocket and Groot time. This is going to be good. Finally. All right. I am Groot. It's a little group though, right? Yeah, it's it's a baby group for sure. Okay. All oh, right. Oh, so, you're you're group and I'm rocket. All right. Where where am I? Which group? Oh, I see him. Went well, around. Okay. What can I do here? Oh, look. I, I think we have to go down here actually, because like the camera panned this way, so there must be something down here. I right, am trying to get over there. There's a broken ship down here. Oh oh, what does it say? Jumping. Oh, sorry. Oh, grenades can destroy silver objects. All right. So if I throw a grenade, got it. So they all have like a square special ability that can come in handy somewhere. Gotcha. Got it. So now we've learned that we have to use the grenades on the silver objects. Okay. So rocket has grenades. Got it. Okay. So I am. I'm Groot. Okay. And I'm going over. Oh, and that's you. a Groot thing. So you actually can stand on this. There's something special you can do on this little over to the right. Because it has a little card that shows screwed on. Oh right, that's what those cards are. Yeah, so it's uh, like that's a special ability for that character, and then you. Can... I'm growing the plants, of course. Ah, that, that makes, makes sense. sense. Yes. Oh, and now you're a big group. I'm bigger. Yeah. Excellent. And I'm making a bridge. That's <laughs> oh, the random user. <laughs> that hurts, man. He said, "I thought Naughty Dog made the games." Lol. Oh. Hey, that's okay. It's comment. So, did you think we made Jack and Daxter? Is that? Is that what you thought? I don't know. I'm, I'm curious. How did that go? Uh, uh, Manin, Manny Danivals. Manny Danivals, thank you for the follow on Twitch. Appreciate that. Uh, click that follow button. We have lots of good uh, good shows, like on Wednesday, there's going to be the folks that are left in the office, be, uh, starring Corey hosting, because I will one of those people that will not be in the office on Wednesday, will be playing Donkey Kong Country. Oh, really? So that should be a good time. Excellent. And maybe I can rebuild this now? Oh, okay, I can build something here to help. 
Okay, uh, I, I have a good thing over here. Somewhere. Raphael Zagolin said, uh, what, is the jo- what, what was your job, Ted Price, when you started Insomniac Games? My job? Yep. Well, it was just me in a little room. I was programming, and poorly. And what else was I doing? I uh, was writing a design document for Disruptor. And when Al Hastings joined after he graduated from college, which was the summer of 1994, he did all the programming. He wrote the engine for a first game, and I created the art and animation and sound. And then we, we created a demo for Disruptor with all that stuff and tried to get somebody to sign us and pretty much failed again and again. And then finally went to Universal Interactive Studios where Mark Cerny was hanging out, and he said, we should work with you guys. And after that, we called up, uh, we, we actually got the deal and called up Brian Hastings, who's Al's brother, and he joined Al as a programming dynamic duo. So Al was writing the engine, Brian was writing the tools and gameplay code, and that's how we started Disruptor, and then we started adding people. Oh look, you've got a turret. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Yeah. And I realized I had to target it. I was like trying to turn the turret, and then I realized it was all about turning the, or just moving the actual reticule on the screen. That's, that looks like fun, and I'm yeah. just not... Doing that. It's classic rocket to be on top of the ship with a with a mounted weapon. Yes. Uh, uh, Dollar Ram, PlayStation confirmed you at PSX 2017. Is that true? Like I like keep telling people. Do you think the PlayStation blog is lying about it? Mm. That's my favorite answer. <laughs> uh, so uh, and I saw Ricky Jedi uh, asked, "Have you guys seen Thor?" What did you think? Did you I've not seen it, and I, everybody yeah, I says yeah, I have to go see it. So and good. I gotta tell you, the trailers looked amazing. And usually, trailers are you know, you're never really sure. They usually put it seems like they pull the best parts out of the movie, but everybody has told me. So here's the crazy thing about the trailers too. Now, a the tone, the tone of that one trailer. It's just that one trailer that like everyone was like, that trailer's awesome. Like that's the tone of the movie. Too, yeah, which is great. B there's a ton of scenes in that trailer where like. Like the moment with the character on the screen is what happened on the screen, but like the CG background's completely different. Oh. So like they hid spoilers oh, by funny. doing completely different back, putting them on different backgrounds. And maybe that was, oh, this isn't done yet, so we'll just swap the background in that is done, so we can get that line out of I, the trailer. I don't, I don't know. think they were planning it. That's because yeah. that's pretty clever. Yeah, and so it was like, wow, they actually hid, uh, they hid stuff in the movie by changing the CG backdrops behind the characters in certain moments of the trailer, which I thought was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, because I didn't really feel like that movie was too spoiled for me um, when I saw it. I was I was I was really impressed. I thought it was really really good. The, easily the best Thor movie, and I'd say like a top half MCU movie, which all the movies in the top half were excellent. Well, without seeing it, it does seem like Marvel has continu- continued to refine their sense of humor in all of these movies just to get it just to nail it. I mean, Homecoming was a great example of that too, and I, that's hard, really hard to do. We spent a lot of time with Ratchet trying to make sure that uh, our humor was consistent, it was the right balance of sophistication and goofiness, and uh, Sunset, same thing. It's, it's hard to do, and you end up, I remember in Sunset, we spent a lot of time refining it because the main character was, too, was not particularly funny at times, yeah. and, and upset people because he was arrogant and, and too cocky, which is kind of the way all of our characters sort of start out, yeah. until we pull them back. You know, I thought it was really funny because I think, I think even it's you know the performance is interesting there because I always felt like the guy version of that character comes off as more it came off more as that than the girl version did as yes. weird as that is. It's the exact same lines. No, it's not, you're right. It's true, and, and we had and it's really interesting how that can make such a huge difference. I mean, like obviously, like the performance, how you say things matters, but. Um, I think it was really interesting that there was that much of a difference, and I think there's even like some gender norms in that, like reacting to how a guy says something kind of confidently to how a woman would say something confidently. Like, I think there's a lot of like interesting things, like the reaction to those two characters simultaneously. We just had something fall. Oh, it's one of the panels on the wall. Yeah, one of our plastic panels. I don't know if you guys could hear that, but the plastic panel just fell on a probably clobbered. Uh, it reminds me of when we were shooting yeah. scenes for Disruptor. We were, we were in this tiny, tiny studio. We were doing live action right. film film for the game instead of CG because CG was so expensive back then. So right. we would just film it on a little tiny set in Santa Mon- on Santa Monica Boulevard. 
and all of our props were pasted to the walls to try to make it look like a uh, you know, sci-fi set, and they kept on falling off the walls during the filming, which was pretty funny. So you'd watch the outtakes and things just go boop in the middle of the, in the, middle of the take. Of course, the, what was really entertaining about that was the acting was just so Oh yeah, those scenes funny. are great. Not, not, in, not intentionally funny. That was, that was the best part of the game. Oh, whoa. Am I... Am I winning? Are you winning? You're I don't winning. know. So I don't know exactly what we just... Oh, see, that was what we had to do. We had to get him to smash that so now we can build something out of the wreckage of it, I think. Uh, was the wait, key. Or we, are we, did we die? Somebody died. Oh, we, no, I, it, worked. it worked. Yeah, it worked. It worked. So okay. now I think we can actually we build what we need to build. Oh, wait. Was that you built? I thought it was you for a second. Sometimes I get confused. Who's this way? I, I tend to forget which I am. You're usually player one. That's cool. That's cool. <laughs> uh... So, if you guys had to, uh, Dollaram, if you had a choice to make any superhero game, Marvel or DC, what would it be? Marvel. Well, Marvel and Spider-Man. That's exactly yeah. what we chose. So, yeah, we had that choice and we made it. And it's very exciting to be making Spider-Man. Indeed. Okay, so I think, okay, what do I do here? Okay, this is, oh, you know what, now I can shoot that, right? You're, are you making Oh, no, you know what, I see, it's a, it's definitely a Star-Lord thing, but I'm getting the bad guys hitting me. Oh wait, I somehow switched off the Star Lord. Okay, let's see. I am... Oh, I just... Oh, you know what? Avoid the green beams. That's what I need to do. I continue to get uh, disintegrated here. I'm getting attacked frequently, though. Like, I'm trying to hit this gravity mine, and I keep getting... So guys you, keep punching me. You're Okay, so you've got to... Oh, you're a true believer. Somebody yeah, yeah. Believer. I think I have like a 10... A, like a 10 hit streak or something. Okay. So you can. Uh, there it is. There, I got the gravity mine. I was like, I know I could shoot it. I just I'm like, I kept getting mobbed by dudes. So the gravity mine just pulls all sorts of random debris in. Yeah. In so it's like, okay, what's what's it pulling out? I love oh, it's pulling. It's pulling his hand in. That's that's pretty cool. There we go. I do love how these games like everything's made out of Legos. Like it's always just so impressive to me how they like deconstruct that stuff. Yeah. Oh, oh, watch out! He's gonna get punched. Oh. oh, oh. Yeah. oh. So, did you not survive that? I somehow switched out. I don't know if I got killed, but I switched to Baby Groot right as Star Lord got hammered. What? Oh, oh this is a, this is a cutscene. I I keep on yeah. thinking that those black and white scenes mean we have failed, but not. What the heck? Well, Rocket even was like, "What the heck just happened? The ship just remade itself. How is that possible?" All right. Let's wreck this now. All right. So now it looks like this is a big gun that we need to use against him. Are you in that? You're in that. I don't know. I don't know where I am. Wait, wait. You're Can Baby Groot do it? Can Baby Groot run it? Maybe a rocket thing. Yeah, I'm, I'm coming over. Rocket. Maybe. Ro okay, here we go. I'm pressing yeah. circle. Triangle. Alright, here, here we go. go. Alright, now you've got control. Now All you right, just aim. Now you aim with the cursor. I'll take care of the dudes on the ground with Baby Groot. And maybe... I'm, I'm, shoot his hand. Hand. I'm trying to shoot his hand. Yeah, it looks like it wants me to shoot his hand. Yeah. It's like leaving that go. in target range. Got it. Uh, let's see, I saw a question there. Oh, what? Uh, if you're just joining us, this is Insomniac Live, and we are playing the new Traveler's Tales game, which you're is winning Lego Marvel Marvel's Super Heroes 2, which starts us out with the Guardians of the Galaxy, which I appreciate a ton, because I love the Guardians. Got him. Uh, you're watching me with my amazing skills. Yeah, and we got some two-player co-op, so if we're a little slow in the chat, sorry about that, and I... Call out to Dooku2D. Thank you for the follow. Click that follow button. We've got good show. Another good show on Wednesday. We'll be playing some Donkey Kong Country. More shows next week. Shows on Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Um, Flamed Beacon says, I've gotten this question a little bit. Um, will Sunset Overdrive ever get 4K HDR support on Xbox One X? No. No plans. Yeah, we don't. We don't have what's not doing. Dumb question. I am trying to construct my whatever it is over here. There's some shiny. Oh, I think we have to get him to punch something else again, maybe. Okay, yeah, well, it looks like it looks. Punch? It looks like there. Yeah, I, I was there's hitting on those earlier. Maybe I can. Oh wait. I can mark you. Or maybe there's something for Starkit. Rocket is a little bit more effective with this weapon. You know what I really like? I like the chromatic aberration they have. Yeah. It's like, I actually like, like using the term chromatic aberration. Yeah, it's a fun term. Yeah. But it's super cool when you get, when he's hitting and the whole screen sort of separates into different colors. Like that. 
can't punch him or anything. Oh, wait. Let me shoot him. I can't. I also have trouble telling who is good and who's bad here. Because I got. Looks like there's some robots just running around with their hands in the air. And then I think there are some enemies too. And I probably saw I must. We must eventually have to go in there, but it's something else we gotta do first. Let's okay, see. I see some fingers. Or maybe we can go up as. Oh, look. There's a. I'm standing on his. Okay. Okay. I feel uh, like it must have to do something to the. Uh, well. I, okay, so Rocket's standing on. Oh! It looks like a button. I right can there. pick up. Groot can pick up. Huh, interesting. Can I shoot anything over here? Okay, so, so I'm, okay, well, I'm standing on this. I'm, I'm, I've got a button pressed down. I've held down. Oh, okay. Oh, interesting. Oh, so maybe I can climb. Maybe I can actually climb up him. You think? Okay. Let me see if I can. Oh yeah, oh, it looks like. Dra it looks like uh, what's his name? Uh, oh, that's a drag. Oh wait, see so where's Drax? Oh, we need Drax. Oh here. come on, what? Wait a second. Our rocket jumped off as soon as I let go. That's not cool. Let me back right again. Okay, yeah, you. If you jump on that button, maybe I can do something with it. Okay, ready? I'm, I'm coming your way. Okay, I'm there. Okay. I got the button. All right. Okay. Oh there yeah, we there go. we go. Yeah, we figured it out. And now Drax leaps up onto the ship. Okay, I guess Rocket needs to do... Okay, let Drax the Destroyer show how this is done. Alright, go Drax. Oh no! Shit. Oops. Can you get back to him? No, not easily. Really? Oh wait, there he is. Drax is down here. Okay. Sorry, I... I, 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 I'll jump back to him. I don't know what I did there. I will be a Rocket again and stand in the sand. Okay, stand. Yeah, okay, give go. me that. Alright, launch me back up. Alright, go. And now... Can you... Nope, oh, oh. You, can you, can you... Maybe you can swing, swing. Yeah, and that's jump it. off of All it? Right. Yep, that probably makes sense. Right, I will do my job and just stay on this button. Uh, Corey just asked the Amazing Spider-Man if we're, if he's losing patience watching us play this. <laughs> it must be a little hard if you've already played through something to watch us just flail. struggle. Yeah, flailing at like, what are we supposed to do? Yeah, All right, there you go. Okay, so wait, can you wait. swing? I, I can't really swing. Yeah, oh, wait, yeah, there, yeah, maybe yeah. I can. There, yep, there it is. There it is. All right, something's gonna Come happen on. now. Oh, 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 I slid off. I get such a weird. <laughs> this is terrible. All right. Let's hopefully. Uh, let's turn. hopefully I. All right. I've got this one more time. Let's see if I get the camera right here. It's like I accidentally. I would. I want to slide down so I get more of a swing, but mm -hmm. not too much. Yeah. Wait. There we go. Okay. I think I finally got the swing directions yeah. down. Now the big question right, is, what do you do? Jump. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yep. That's great. There, now. Alright, alright, now there's something I can build, maybe. Okay, you're what am I, turning up the blow heat. This up. Oh, I see. I, I'm, I'm turning it into oh. another ball I can roll down, I think. Okay. Turn it into a weapon. Something. Something is. Maybe you've uh, destroyed his vision? Oh, I just, I just fall out because I was. Oh, you took out his power. Oh, now, okay, now it can go in there. Now it can hit Look the weak for spot. a weak spot. Well, there's yeah. the big What's green thing. Green usually means good, but all right. Yeah, all right. Let's go. I think I'm gonna jump inside of him now, just like, just like. Uh, oh, oh, you know no, what? Maybe I have to shoot it. Yeah, we gotta shoot it. I can shoot. Where is Star Lord? I think Rocket can shoot too. I can shoot. There we go. Bam, bam. Yeah. It's like a drum set, isn't it? Amazing Spider-Man said it's hilarious watching us fail. Yeah. <laughs> Tune in every week and you can watch us fail. Well, I, I would. I'm on the show. I've met, failed at Metroid. Well, you know, Metroid. Metroid's hard. I feel like this is like this is supposed to be like a kids game, right? Like, yeah. it's supposed to be a family game, and we're just getting our butts kicked. Well, we're getting butts kicked, but you know what's nice is forgiving. Oh yeah, you die and you're just like, okay, you come back to life. Like, okay, you lost, some, you lost some studs. So I've been playing on uh, Nier Automata. Uh -huh. Yeah. And and when you. Face a boss and die. Even though the save points aren't that far away, oh. they're still pretty far away. Oh, we supposed to do something important. I think here? I was supposed to like not get sucked into. Is that a bad thing? I don't know. Maybe I just. As we're talking about how forgiving the game is. Oh yeah. no, this, uh, this we're looks fine. Like we made pressing. it. The guardian survived it. Yeah. Uh, oh. Uh, Dollar Ram said, "You guys made Resistance Ratchet playing in Spider-Man, but also Sunset on Xbox. Are you first party to Sony or Microsoft or what, or something completely different entirely?" Well, the term that people gen generally use is second party. So we work with we work with a lot of different publishers. Uh, Sony and Microsoft are 
console manufacturers, and when they work with independent developers like us, they usually call it second party. Yeah, it was like a term that was made up for Rare back in the day, because Rare was like sort of the weird, like not Nintendo, but exclusive still. Yeah. Like, I mean, we end up working with all the first party people. Yeah. Right. So it's Which like, is great. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's we're just, really we're nice. just, when to Sony, even though we're independent, the deals may be a little different. The marketing and production people are all just the same first party people that say work with Naughty Dog and work with Sucker Punch. Um, the PR people we work with work on, you know, other games that are, you know, first party Sony games. So it's basically like being a first party that they don't own. Yeah. And the same thing when we work with Microsoft, we work with the first party teams. And those games are, have always, for us at least, been exclusive to those platforms. Yep. And so in many ways, our goal really is to become synonymous with those platforms, at least our games should become synonymous with those platforms. And I think it was really fortunate that Spyro uh, was, Ratchet is. Generally, yeah. well, and well, Ratchet definitely is. I think. Yeah, it is. I mean, three generations of PlayStation hardware. Ratchet has been, yeah, has been there. I mean, the fastest selling Ratchet game on PS4, so people still thirsty. Yeah, it's really cool, and, and if people want to sh uh, share with us what they're interested, what they like about it, what they don't like about it. We're always interested in hearing. For sure. Uh, hey, got a trophy. Nice. Oh, this oh, is cool. cool. A little comic. Oh, I see. Oh, okay. Oh, Got it. It's there. like comics. That's cool how they show all the stuff in a comic form. That's, yeah. that's pretty neat. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Uh, oh, remaster resistance. I'll ask one more time. Will Resistance 4 be optimized for PS4 Pro? See what you did there. Jeez. Resistance 4, what a great idea. Yeah, that's an interesting idea, isn't it? Uh, not teasing anything. Nothing necessarily planned or happening. Just, you know. That was a fun series to make. Challenging series to make, but fun. Yeah, we've had a lot of fun playing uh, Resistance 3 with uh, Marcus. Hmm. Had a good time. Uh, let's see. Uh, Manny Danivals. I've always wanted to play Sunset, but never had an Xbox. Is there any interest in a Sunset Porter sequel? Well, like we said, we love Sunset. Uh, there's no plans for anything at the moment, but it would definitely be cool. Mm -hmm. uh, Xbox Ones are cheap, though, if you find like the original OG model. They're pretty inexpensive these days, so it's not too expensive to pick it up. And Sunset Overdrive, also cheap. Yeah. So, not too bad. I bet you probably would have a friend who has like an OG Xbox One that they'd lend you for a couple weeks if you wanted to play through it. Highly recommend you check it out. Yeah! Spider-Man hanging out with Thor and Iron Man. and That was awesome. Nick Fury's calling. Wow, everybody's having a good time together. Uh, Gravy Biscuits says, Hey, Ted, what's your game of the year so far? Oh, great question. I haven't played enough room yet. Uh, yeah, our three week holiday break hasn't happened, which is where a lot of people catch up on a bunch of games usually. Yeah. Thank gosh. Oh, Breath of the Wild. Sorry. Yeah. Easy. Easy. Now, that's because I probably have three or four more games to play before the end of the year. But I think What's it's gonna be hard to knock Breath of the Wild off the pedestal for me. Yeah, that that one just sucked me in and would not let go. Oh, I can fly around again. I love this whole flying around thing. I will admit that I do play a lot of Clash Royale. Do you still play a lot of Clash Royale? I, I know there's like a two v two mode now. And there's like this football mode that they have. That was pretty fun actually. That was a that was a really cool way to become familiar with the units that I didn't have. Yeah, and to get excited about getting something. Down the road, I, my the reason I play is because my nine-year-old son is really into it, and so on the weekends we talk Clash Royale strategy, mm. or during the week. I mean, he, we don't allow him to play during the week, but when he's he, he does like talking about it, so it's a, we bond. I, I do love I do love the way that game has like a great just kind of a, a sense of um, a sense of just you know there's a lot of strategy, but it's also like because it's so fast, you yeah. can kind of quickly learn from your mistakes and. Like there's a lot of back and forth in it that I think is just really, really, um, really fun. But yeah, it's it's really. I mean, it's, you can see how a company that how that company has refined the art of those types of games. For sure. I mean, they continue to figure out great ways to present UI, uh, how to keep you engaged with you know, rewards that are just coming in at the right time. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm not moving. Here. Oh, you're fine. Okay. Yeah. The uh, I don't know. We just got a mission from Iron Man. Um, I am Captain America. I guess right, we're searching the Avengers offices here. It kind we're of, destroying the Avengers office. No, uh, this is like Doctor Strange's mansion. Is, oh, it is a Doctor Strange's mansion. Okay, that makes sense too, I guess. 
And it, it's interesting, we can be in completely different you know rooms here, which is kind of cool. Game, but let me just uh, <laughs> down some sweet tutorial action on you. Question from Killstriker. Who came up with the idea that Sparks represents your health bar in the Spyro games, and was that one of the earlier concepts or late in development, if you remember? I think that was actually pretty late in development because we didn't think too, yeah, we didn't think too hard about it. I think either John Fiorito or Brian Houston could answer that much better than I can. And I had, I, all the minutia, I, I forget pretty easily yeah. who came up with what idea. We probably argued a lot over Sparks' color and effects for for the different levels of health that you had. I think there were things we tried that just didn't make any sense. You couldn't see sparks or you couldn't change those color couldn't tell that his color had changed in some of the, the versions that we came up with. I think Sparks also evolved physically too, in terms of how how he looked, because he was so small on screen we needed to make him you know, to exaggerate certain features so certain of his features. I think that's why it's really big eyes. That's what I would call this. That Insomniac, thank you for the follow. We appreciate cool. it. Do something. Sorry, I'm, I was right. watching you and not doing anything. So. Yeah, no, I'm just like hunting down these gears and springs and I don't know what the other one is, power or something or whatever uh, that Tony sent us looking around I for. I think it was actually maybe Tony, Star Tony Stark's mansion? It's no. kind of run down for Tony Stark's mansion. Yeah, I know, right? Like, it's, like, I'm not exactly sure where we are, but... I think I'm going. Okay. Because there's definitely a painting of Iron Man over the fireplace there, which feels a little not Doctor Strangey. Oh, it's a cheat code. Yeah, that that TV lets you put in cheat code. I okay. checked out Gwenpool's room. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, Brandon Dr. Twenty Seven asks, Ratchet will always be with Sony. That is a Sony owns Ratchet and Clank, so uh, I think it's pretty safe to say that. Uh, I mean, you know, unless something really wild happened, I, I can't imagine you'd see Ratchet anywhere else. But, you know, like, if you think back to 10, 12 years ago at E3, it was, you know, Nintendo, Sega, and Sony, so things obviously change in this industry over time, but I, I would imagine, at least for the foreseeable future, long-term future even, you will only ever see Ratchet on Sony platforms. Yep. Okay, I found... We're, we're missing a gear and one more power thing. Oh, I found the gears. So we're missing like, one more power thing. All right, and you found those power things. Just they're all, they're all over, yeah. Stuff. They're kind of just all over. They actually don't seem to be in anything. So that is helpful that they're just kind of like laying out and around. Okay, I'm at the sort of a dead end central here. Oh, okay, I found it. Oh yeah! Hey, you look. Oh, you're in the hey, room. Yeah, right? I'm, I'm right around here too. I'm right above you. Who's Captain America? Hello, Captain America. Hello. I'm Captain America. There's something in that case. It looks like it. No. It'd be kind of cool if you could get up that thing. Can't get up that. All right. Jump down. The uh, balcony. Can't let's jump down see. The balcony, off the balcony. Uh, Raphael Zagalin says, "I think Breath of the Wild will be game of the year." Uh, oh, we're in Avengers Mansion. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. That's what I thought. Oh. First, uh, what uh, what happened with Angela Cross? Who knows? I think we said she's with Max Apogee, and they went. I believe that's the official answer to that question. Uh, is that she went off with Max Apogee, and I believe that's explained on a radio transmission or something in one of the one of the games. Did we miss it somewhere? We missed I the last one. Don't yeah, I mean, just, maybe. Oh, maybe it's up forward here though. There's sometimes I come. Oh see there's the big Avengers on the floor. Now I see it. Uh wow, this is great. So we're missing one thing for Iron Man. Where did he hide it? Iron Man, where did you leave your toys, man? Oh my god, it was right up here. I did miss it earlier. But I we got it all now. Wow. Okay. Alright, now we can move on with after our tutorial mission to hunt things right. down. <laughs> um, Flame Beacon, so what do you think of the Battle Royale craze? Has anyone... Well, I don't know what you mean by has anyone in Insomniac come to you guys with their own idea or, either, or have you come up with your own yet? I don't know what that means exactly. Like for a knockoff game or anything? I don't yeah, know. We're not going to be competing with PUBG. I yeah. think they do a great job with it. Uh, yeah. Fun. Super fun. You know, I when I was reading that, I was still thinking about us talking about Clash Royale, not Battle Royale games, so I was a little confused. Oh. Now that makes a lot more sense. When you said PUBG, I'm like, oh, even Battle Royale. Okay, that makes more sense. About this. 
Oh, you can be Iron Man, and then Iron Man can open this. Got it. Right, are you uh, Iron Man? Yeah, now I'm Iron Man. Yeah. Well, back when I used to play like the X Men arcade games and stuff, Iron Man was always my favorite. Why? I don't know. It's like, just like suit. Did, did you? Well, cool. you know, was that before? That was before the Iron Man. Oh movie, yeah, right? yeah, before the movies. Like, I mean, for me, Iron Man was sort of a yeah, kind of okay character before the movies. Yeah. When when. Uh, so easy, Robert Downey Jr. Junior started playing him, then yeah, became a favorite. Yep, yeah, that plus uh, I mean that movie was just yeah, that movie was great. All right, we have a Nick Fury looks like and a hologram. Oh, we finally made it down. He's been calling us. You kept hearing over the loud spe loudspeaker like Nick Fury has an urgent message for you. He's gonna be we had to ass. collect parts. Apparently the door was broken, so we need to fix it. Oh, yep. Continue the story. Let's go. Uh, Amazing Spider-Man, there should be more split-screen co-op games these days. It's hard to do. It is hard to do, because you've got to draw a lot more, uh, pretty much, I think you've got to draw basically two separate views of, in this case, large environments, and that's probably the biggest drawback. Well, with a lot of games being like, you know, more open world and stuff, having to account for two players. Yeah, you can be completely Diverging. different sections. And then loading two sections of the world, like it's just that's a extremely yeah. Uh, it means you put limitation, a lot of limitations on what you're creating, and that's you know, it's a toss up. And you have to look at how many people would play split screen versus how many people want would not, and and generally we, we I don't think we've seen a whole lot of data on that. Usually it's anecdotal. For yeah, example, not, if somebody wants to, I, for example, I want to play like it, so let's make. Call. Or even you see a lot of games, like the earlier LEGO games didn't even split screen, you know, they kind of forced you to stay on the screen together, because it's just hard, it's hard to split that and do those things. Uh, you may have to nerf uh, how your game looks in order to be able to load two different viewpoints or load two different tile sets of the map yeah. at the same time, which is, uh, which is tough. Um, random user says split screen hurts my mind. <laughs> well, it can actually. I think it is confusing sometimes because you, you, know, you look at the wrong one. Right. I feel like I've been doing it for so long since split screen gaming was such a big thing back in the day. Like, it, I'm still, you know, it's like it's a little weird because you don't do it very often anymore. But I think it depends. I mean, if you if you have if a you have roommate kids, or a significant other who likes to play, yeah. or kids. Let us sally to their aid. We see a lot of couples now having like the two TVs and two consoles so they can play online and everything since most games uh, don't support it where like I know I know a lot of people that have like two big TVs in their living room with his and her <laughs> consoles so they can that's sit there on the couch cool. together and play like Mass Effect or I'm talking about you John Drake <laughs> he's probably not watching but he's a busy man that's a great idea I've never considered yes. that yep oh yeah uh, I mean like then you can play co-op games together and uh, yeah. see each other's screens so it's kind of like Split screen, but via brute force. Right. I get to be Thor now, which is pretty exciting. So a friend of ours, Ali Moss, uh, who did the cover for Resistance 3, he did some artwork for the first Thor movie. Uh, I think he did like a cast and crew poster. And uh, they wanted to pay him, and he's like, no, I don't want to be paid. He's like, they, he's really hot in the poster scene. This is about the same time as Resistance 3, too, or maybe a little before, but right around the same period. And uh, he's like, I don't want uh, any money. It's like, what I want is, uh, it's like, what I want is, uh, oh, I think I'm supposed to, oh, I now have lightning. What am I supposed to activate? What did he say he wanted? He wanted the hammer. He wanted one of the hammers from the movie. Uh, and, uh, and I guess this was early enough that they didn't care enough. They, they thought it was okay. They thought it was a good deal to get Ollie Moss involved. And so they did. They gave him. Uh, oh, we need Captain America over here. Okay. Yeah, I Captain. see. Cap oh, I see. All right. So I'm I'm standing here with this shield. Oh, we can jump up now. Yeah. Now you okay. can jump. Okay. I guess I can give you a boost if you jump on it. Okay. I gotta get rid of this. Oh. Oh, there you go. Let me stand okay. on it. All right. There you go. Now you can jump on the shield, and I'll boost oh, you up. Wait. Oh, I'm, you're already up there. Yeah, Never I'm mind. Up. I thought you were. Yeah. See, I was looking. All right, you're up there. All right. Uh, yeah. I guess maybe there's something you can do up okay. there. Do. Okay. I will. Try. I'm flying. I didn't but anyway, he got the hammer. But oh, the funny nice. thing about the hammer is, is that it now has he's used it as a toilet paper roll holder, <laughs> which is hilarious to me. It's a very Ollie thing to do, actually. If you know Ollie Moss. 
but that's what that's so he has like the actual Thor's hammer from the first Thor movie in his bathroom. That which is just it's kind of cool. it's so holly. Uh Code of Comics, any plans for Spider-Man PS4 Funko Pops? Uh, we haven't announced anything. Those would be really cool, though. You are right. They would be super awesome if there was uh, Funko Pops. I bet if you Thor can probably electrocute this. Okay, That's so yes. electrocute what? The, it's over to the right. Oh, okay. I think there's a... Maybe. I or maybe see. I just keep throwing stuff at it. Okay, and to electrocute it, I would just what? Circle? Uh, yeah, or hold down square, maybe. Or maybe I just have to keep throwing stuff at it. Yeah. Maybe not. Maybe I'm wrong. Something happened. Something oh, changed. there's a gun. Oh. Yeah, it might be a little tricky getting inside. All right, there's a gun. Let's take a look around and see if we can get right. shot. Yeah, I'm getting shot by it. Let me see. I kept throwing, like, I'm giant gonna... bricks of... All right, I got it. Okay. Gun four. Oh, I like, I like the destructiveness of this particular Electric thing. Electric yeah. yeah, that's cool. Oh. I like how you could actually electrocute me with it too, so you have to like look out. Oh, sorry. Uh, okay, it looks like there is a little uh, gear. I thought we gear. Have, to, probably have to smash some stuff to. Yeah. Smash. Oh, so this is all. Thor smash. Yeah, Thor with the. Thor with the uh, electricity. Okay. And and the flying ability. Yeah, that's it's pretty right. sweet. Thor feels oh, pretty look. OP right now. Yeah. I can, oh gosh, you know, I, I keep on hitting triangle. triangle. And I, I've got to, there's got to be a way to get Captain America up here, though. That's the, I'm wondering if there's something we missed to get him back up here. I'm, oh, you know what? I bet if we go stand on these things, maybe. Oh, okay. Yeah, if you come stand on this, then it'll probably drop this to let Captain America up here. We might right. need him. All right, coming over. Uh, let's see. Does anyone remember Ultimate Alliance for PS2 and 360? Uh, yes, those games are fun. I really like the Ultimate Alliance games back in the day. Uh, okay, now I'll go down to Captain and see right. if I can make the elevator happen. Send the pro. Yeah, let's go. Let's go, Cap. Good work. Now let's try and find a way inside. Why is Why is he wearing oh. a helmet? Uh, maybe it's just cold outside. Okay. Well, it's just strange. It's Thor. I guess Thor is a guide and Gamora is an alien. Yeah, so she's cool. Okay. Yeah, that was what we needed to do. Uh, playing Beacon. Is, would there, is there any genre you'd love to get into with a new IP, Ted? Is there like a genre you'd love to make a game from and maybe you haven't? That's thinking. Yeah. It's an interesting question. Like we, We've made a lot of games yeah. in different genres. I mean, we... First I, I would have said in Metroidvania, but game, we made, but we made uh, that with Song of the Deep. Um, first person, love first person shooters. We made those. I love open world games. We're, we've made those and are making those. Yeah. Uh, what else? Let's see. Sims? No. Not really that into Sims. RTSs? No. Oh, I see. Okay. Sports games? No. Racing games? No. What am I missing? Oh. Uh, RPGs, big RP, big sprawling RPG. I don't think oh. so. I, I don't know. A, a dungeon crawler, no. Loot game, no. MMO RPG. <laughs> MMO RPG, yeah. Maybe ten years ago, that would have been awesome. But I think only one can exist at a time and be viable. Okay, I'm, I'm doing nothing. Sorry, I gotta. No, I think I, I think I have to put these flames out with my shield, but I'm not exactly. Can I electrocute them with my? No, it, like even it says, okay, so what does it say? It says, press oh, circle to enter shield mode before entering Lego fires, then press X to put them out with your shield, okay. All right, so circle, I've got the shield up. Oh, there it is, got it. I just just screwing the button presses up, okay. as I do. And now, oh. switch your targets to target nearby wall switches with your shield, okay, got it. Cool, I understand now, it's cool. Hey. So that's a great oh, question. A, so right. you have to electrocute that. Okay, here we go. I gotta remember to hit circle. Let me see. Circle, right, and L three. Why does it tell me L three now? Hold circle right. to charge up your electricity. Oh, there you go. So then you. Okay. So uh, L three is the oh, okay. hint. There you go. Uh, Amazing Spider-Man says, "Thank God you don't plan to do any RTS or sports games." <laughs> Well, there's some there's some great developers who do those, and it wouldn't. I think it's 
the market. It'd be a hard thing for us. Yeah, it's like it's like you have your expertise, and if you're gonna get into something, uh, I mean, like no one had really expertise in VR, so it was just kind of almost learning and getting yeah. into that. And but even then, like we definitely stuck to some things in our wheelhouse to start. You know, Edge of Nowhere is a third-person game because that's what we're good at, and so we're trying to make that work in VR. Now, like I think Unspoken, on the other hand, is definitely like more about we never done a motion control game. I mean, we'd had move controls and resistance, but. Um, I, it was, we. I think on that one we finally figured out how to answer the question of why VR. And that was that was I think the challenge for us, for all of our for our first couple of games. We, in doing a third person game in VR, it was much more difficult to answer the that question why VR. Uh, with, but when you're talking about throwing fireballs or feeling like you're really a wizard. In Chicago, in first person, VR is a good vehicle for that. Yeah. Mm. There's some other types of games. It's, it's uh, hard MOBAs. to... It's hard. MOBAs. MOBAs. Gosh. Again, that's that's a genre where it seems like there are one or two games can survive. Right. And, uh, and be successful. And you're basically going up against Valve. Uh, Blizzard and Riot. If you try to make a, a new MOBA, yeah, uh, which is the tough, no, tough. Nothing wrong with that. I mean, I think every what's great is that there's always an opportunity for someone to oh, become the new king of the mountain. It's just you just gotta have something special. Yeah. Okay, maybe if I go up here. Oh, I see. Here's a door. Oh, we need Thor over here. Oh, all right. I, I'll I, go get him. Oh, yeah. All right, right, I got him. I'll be. Captain America with the helmet on. He looks blue. I don't think the helmet. And even then, actually, if you think about Full Frontal Assault, it was kind of a light. That's true. It had a little bit of a MOBA feel to it. It was still a third-person shooter, but it kind of had some of those elements. Yeah. There was a time where we were playing with that in Overstrike slash Fuse too, which mm -hmm. uh, the competitive multiplayer had definitely that kind of feel to it. Uh, okay, and then now I don't know if I have to do this one. Mm -hmm. Is this a Thor one? Yeah, that's what I thought. Go with the word. We use the hints a lot. I, you know, at least we have them. Yep. Okay, and that I charge. I forgot what, what we're doing here. What so we we're, we're on the other side. There's two these two command centers that will open that big door. I think we're trying to go through. And why are we going through the big door? Not really sure. Okay. But you know, it's the next spot on the path. Yeah, but I want to know. I want to know, are we saving the world? Are we destroying the monster? Uh, Amazing Spider-Man, help us out. Help us, what, what are we doing here? So we probably missed the cutscene because we were talking. Um, how, how much harder is it developing for VR? Actually, Amazing Spider-Man just asked. I said, well, we found it was pretty challenging at first because... The design we designs that we were used to level designs for third person character games simply didn't work. Right, uh, and that had a lot to do. You can throw your shield that with the circle button, I think, or hold down square or circle one of the two. Oh. Maybe it's circle. Circle. I don't know. Or is it square? Throwing you target it. Yeah. Target oh, oh that, sorry. Target I that switch. Yep, there it. you go. That should open. <laughs> That's pretty cool. So, uh, we all of our first experiments with VR failed miserably when we applied the same sort of camera and control paradigms that we were using in our other third person games to it. And we had to rethink the way our levels are built, and given that you are the camera as you're moving through these levels. So when you look around, uh, you can't, what we, what we realized very quickly is we can't take camera control away from the player or you will get sick. Sure, and that meant that all of this, what we're doing with our right stick right now, was not something that we could do in VR. It would just, it would just confuse people and again create discomfort. So our levels had to be uh, carefully designed so that you were at, at the edge of nowhere, for example, you were going forward most of the time, even though there was some limited lateral functionality. Excuse me, hello. Are you all right? Uh, anyway, what that's sort of a quick what answer to the that? question. Yeah. Uh, and also, I think combat becomes very different as well in VR when you're um, when you're thinking about targeting. What do you do if you're not if your head is doing all the targeting? Right. Uh, Feral Rights is also an interesting game too because it was a VR brawler. 
can't hit the switch. And so, we'll need to find same, a way to same challenges. We have to sort of gauge the player's intent. Where, where is the player really trying to... Which which enemy is the player trying to hit? Is the one he's looking at? Is the one he's actually pushing the character towards? His character towards? I hear a siren. Yeah, I see a captain bad. over on the left here where I'm at. I see oh. a Captain America shield thing. I'm not sure if you can throw your shield up in there or not. We may you have to knock it. that down. It's right here. But I don't know if we have to knock that down first. Oh, I, it's funny. I, okay, I'm not remember. You see it in that Yeah, it's, it's in that, in that box. It's, no, it's actually in this glass oh. box right above it. Okay, got it. Um, but I don't know how we... I don't know if we... We may have to drop it somehow, which I'm not 100% mm -hmm. sure on. Uh, random user asked who did the score for Spider-Man. We haven't announced that yet. So stay tuned. Uh, Tricky. Yeah, just like throwing in who, a quick. Who did it, right? As yeah, if, who, uh, we had already announced that we we're just gonna. Yeah, like oh yeah, who did it? Yeah, no, nah, you know. You almost got me. I almost said it. <laughs> uh, that's why I jumped in. Yeah, so. it, it wouldn't have been the end of the world, but you know, we'll we'll say at some point. James is making music. Yep, I'm. I make I make it all. Yep. On a MIDI keyboard. And it's not very good, but it's okay. Uh, Corey makes music, though. Uh, he makes a lot of music. Mr. Kitar himself back there. Right, Corey? Yeah. Kitar, excellent. Are you in a band, Corey? I'm a dabbler. Are you, are you in a band where you play guitar? No, I was in high school. That's pretty cool. I see a... I see a, a Maybe I can fly up here. That's the one. That has to be something. There is a Captain America symbol on the floor here. Oh. And but oh, I, I tried I tried targeting it. Oh, you stay. Why don't you stand, oh, stand on it for a second? Right. Yeah, that would make sense. And then maybe you can hold down circle and then launch someone. Yes. Or maybe you can now throw it. It's telling me it's it's trying to aim me toward. There we go. There you go. So you have to just throw from a distance, maybe. I'm try okay. So I'm I'm aiming. Yeah. And I'm holding down circle. Yeah. I've got it targeted, and now I'm going to let go of circle. No, All right, press the L3, press L3. Let's, oh. see. Let's see what L3 says. Press circle to intersect, then L oh, square, square to throw. There you go. I'm, 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 I'm for the uh, let go. This, this is just odd. Uh, okay. Remaster resistance is Corey. You should get on stream for a change. You know what? You want some Corey on stream? Come back in two days on Wednesday where Corey will be here hosting the show, playing with... Fire. Fire. Uh, God. All right. Let's try it. All right, I'm gonna try. All right, circle. All right, shield mode. Yeah. All right. Do I have to target anything in particular? Let's make sure. Oh, you know what's funny? I, I assumed it was the glass box you had been talking I, well, about. Well, yeah, so. I assumed so too. So that's probably why I'm not able to do it. So there's something here that we're missing that we should be targeting. I don't see anything either. Uh, maybe there's stuff over here. Let me go smash some other things. Okay. I think you're. I think we're on the. You're on the right train there. But I see these could have been smashed. Maybe. Maybe there's parts that can build something. Hmm. Oh, yes, there you go. See, there's the target. Okay. Oh, oh, oh no, sorry. wait, that's the alarm. No, okay, I think we gotta build stuff, right? Or did you already build it? Well, we built, I think two of those are up now, so okay. I don't know what the... There we go. You said there's a target. Um, I don't know if we have to kill that thing. Yeah, there we go. That looks right. Oh, that's there it. you go. Oh, yeah, now defl Oh, I see, it's, it reflects. It's boom. like a boom. Ah, uh, and then it slides right in through the grates to open the door. That is We figured it out. We figured tricky. it out. I am gassy, says this is a chill stream. Hmm. Is it, I don't know if that's a compliment. We're pretty chill today, everyone. Yeah, and thank you for the follow, I am gassy. Uh, like, a, a name like that, sometimes, it's like, is that someone's real Twitch name? Is that an insomniac messing with us by <laughs> making us say I am gassy on the stream? Which, to be fair, like, it's not like we had Indian food for lunch or anything, so, you know, no. What'd you have for lunch, James? Uh, Portos. Oh. Yeah, had a Cuban sandwich. How about yourself? Was it salad? Salad. Yeah. Same salad. Same one. Every day. Ted. Ted gets the pretty much the same salad. Like walks back. There's the moment you can tell too is you hear Ted in his office shaking his salad box up. Because like you shake, you shake, you talk, you mix the salad up with the shake, and you always hear that. It's like that. Chuck a turkey. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Five seconds of Ted shaking his salad, and you know that he's had his normal salad for lunch. I uh. I like consistency. Yeah. Hey, we are. I think I'm trying to fight Captain America here. 
corrupt yeah, Captain I mean, America. And yeah. I'm not. Oh, wait, oh we so are, you're, we are doing damage here. Yeah, so I think you maybe have to electrocute him or something, and then I have to, like... Oh, you know what? I'm not I'm not fighting him. You're fighting him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm you're, stuck you're flying somewhere. around his door, so, go. like, I think maybe if you electrocute him or... Right, let, me, let me do that. Let me get oh, there we go. Electric power charging up. Oh, wait, now we have a puzzle. Uh... So what else is here? I can almost feel strange. Oh, the presence. Okay. Chilling a good presence. I've been expecting you. Raphael, uh, Raphael Zagrel and asked, asked John Frusciani to play some games with you. He would love. Is it from the Chili Peppers? Well, uh, formerly of the Chili Peppers, but okay. yes. I, I I think you. this is the second time he's brought up Frusciani, and apparently Frusciani likes to play video games. Okay. Anyone knows him, and he wants to come play video games. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. He's only one of the greatest guitarists to ever live. Uh, and the Chili Peppers were better when he was in them. Uh, so, I... Yeah, there are a lot of Hollywood folks who like to play video games. Yeah, yeah, actually, Jack Efron's actually I will say we were close to having a special guest who's a Hollywood actor uh, joining us today, but unfortunately he's out of town. Um, but he has agreed to come by and be on the show sometime uh, in December. So I will be working after Thanksgiving to figure out when he can come by. Okay. Um, I think people might be able to guess who it is. I, I can't guess. Yeah, well, I'm Let's not going to confirm it, but I'll tell you after. Okay. Um, but, you know, not anyone necessarily has been involved in it in Insomniac Games either, but a big gaming fan, and he lives in the valley, and uh, he comes over here sometimes and hangs out. It, it is... Okay. I, now you probably know. Yeah. I will say that it, some of my favorite moments at Insomnia kept in when we had special guests here. We had you know, we had Mastodon here. Oh yeah. Resistance. That was that was pretty cool. They were just hanging out with us in the office. Super nice guys. Signing things. Uh, talk about chill. Yeah. For for cool. a for a band like Mastodon, they are really chill. For a band that plays music like Mastodon, they are chill. Yeah, they're a, a they're a lot of fun. They're a lot of fun. We, we did some. We did even a like old video interview with them and stuff. It was cool. You can find that I think if you Google for it. All of these corrupted guys. Remaster resistance. You guys should reach out to Chris Hardwick. I'm sure he'd come on if he was free. I don't think Chris Hardwick is ever free these days. That guy's like busy as hell. On the on the uh, on the American Music Awards. See, that's what I'm saying. Like yeah. he's, the dude's busy. The yeah. dude is busy. Like I think he's very very busy gentleman. Yeah. He was good. He was uh, he was very animated. Yeah, he's uh. Oh, nice. So now we got to somehow knock Captain back out because Captain is uh, shielding. Well, don't we have to take out uh, presence up there? Well, I think Captain is shielding presence oh, right now. Okay. So I think like by maybe I should charge my lightning up somehow. I'm doing a little Gamora Kung Fu here. Yes. Uh... That shield is the problem right now. Hmm. Oh, that was okay. Gamora's gonna unleash her whirlwind fury. Oh, he's stunned. He's stunned. He's stunned. Where's go, 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 Where's go, go, go. Oh, back here, back oh, okay. here, back here. Oh, so I, I don't know. Something's happening. We're in slow motion. Oh, oh. How'd you stun? Oh, wait, oh. I think we just did like a team move sort of thing. Okay. It's so where we're by each other. So have to look out for those button prompts. Okay. Oh, that was a slow mo. Got yeah. It. Okay. Oh, and now we switch. Oh, we switch characters after that team move, I think. Oh. Because I'm the Gamora now, I... and you're. Interesting. To avoid the damaging red thing. Is the special guest Toby Maguire Pog Champ? Uh, no, it's not Toby Maguire. Though Corey has a thing at his desk about how he's a Pog Champion. Um, so if we ever did have Toby Maguire here, we would definitely make him play Pogs with Corey because I'd want to see who wins. Oh, you know what? I bet we can take it down now. All right. Yeah, there we go. We can go up and cover All right, cool. Uh, and it's not Tom Holland either. I will say that. I, I love that Tom Holland over here. He's a funny that, guy. That'd be really cool. At some point, I would love it if uh, the movie Spider-Man came and played the video game Spider-Man. Yes. That'd be really neat. That is That would be fantastic. Yeah. Tom Holland's also a very good dancer. Do you know that? No, I didn't know that. There's is a show... Dancing with the Stars? No, he couldn't no. Be dance. He's way too big to be on Dancing with the Stars. No, but there's a show where celebrities get on and they... they do these crazy dances? It's sort of like you have. Uh, they give you a theme, and you have. To, it's a dance off against other celebrities. You have people like The Rock on it, and I mean, you name big big stars. And he was on it, and apparently he was a dancer before he was an actor. Oh, very coordinated guy. Interesting. That's My daughters cool. who were dancers made sure right, that I watched that. Yeah, for sure. Um, 
Or someone from The Walking Dead. No, not that either. But The Walking Dead is cool. I actually wanted to go to The Talking Dead at some point. I need to try and make that happen. I like that. That would be entertaining. Uh, you master resistance. Keep trying, man. Keep trying. <laughs> Uh, I didn't know this game existed until you started playing it. I only played the first Lego Marvel game. It's Anastasia2458. Good to see you, Anastasia. And yes, this game just came out last week. So if you're jonesing for some Marvel, or you need something for your Christmas list, uh, or you want something to play with your kids, or your niece or nephew, or your little brother or sister, uh, what a great option. And it even has split screen. Yeah, and I think, I think people forget how much the graphics continue to improve in these games. Yeah. Like that that cutscene right there, I'm assuming it was real time, looks, looks really good. This yeah, looks and it's really nice when you have these stylized games that, uh, you know, like, it, it's kind of realistic almost in a way because of yeah. the Lego, but there's just that being able to do the Lego style for everything and with the amount of power that's on these consoles lets you do some really pretty looking things with a lot of cool effects. Yeah. yeah. You know what's nice is Legos, everything's shiny. So you can get one specular right, yeah. everything. And yeah. It makes it look more sort of Oh. Yep, and Poppy. And yeah. Everything pops really well. Uh, let's see. So, anything else? All right, so we're wrapping up here because we're pretty much out of time and we're in between missions. Austin Raymond, but one last question. For Actually, two questions for you, Ted, as we wrap up. What's your favorite superhero? Who's your favorite superhero? Oh. I was a big X Men fan mm -hmm. as a yeah. kid, and, and, or young adult. And I think that's, I really enjoyed. Uh, Characters like uh, Wolverine, and uh, I think he was probably my favorite, mostly because he had a personality, mm -hmm. and you never really knew where his allegiances lay. Did you see Logan? I did. Mm -hmm. That was an amazing movie. I, I'd say of all of the superheroes I've, movies I've seen in the last you know, five or six years, that one got me because they, they took it really far. They made it gritty, yep. and they... I felt like I connected with him much better than I connected with any other hero. Not not because I feel that way and have those anger those anger issues, <laughs> but <laughs> it was really entertaining. As the claws come out of Ted's hand. <laughs> uh, Gravy Biscuit said, "If you guys seen Justice League yet, I haven't. I'm assuming you didn't see it this weekend. I haven't. Yeah. Uh, my wife is a big Justice League fan, so, so we you're going to go see it soon. No, over the break, maybe. And then my last question for you: We were talking about it before because you were like, oh, you know, Breath of the Wild is the game of the year." What games are you gonna play over the break? Do you have like do you have like a small stack of or things of that you're, you're like I need to play that game, but I'll wait till we have this holiday break. Yeah, Evil Dead to uh, Assassin's Creed. Evil Creek. Within. Evil, sorry, <laughs> Evil Dead. Sorry, we we're just talking about Evil Dead. Right? Bruce Campbell, baby. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Evil Within to uh, Assassin's Creed Origins. I really like which, Origins. Which we have it. We have at home, yeah. and I just have to uh, start playing it. And uh, actually, I I really want to play the new Call of Duty. Yeah, it's good. Uh, it's been it's been a while since I played Call of Duty, but this one makes me much more interested because it's going back sort of to its roots. Yeah. And I, I loved uh, the originals when they sure. were portraying World War Two. Yeah, uh, uh, Call of Duty's good, and I really like Assassin's Creed. It surprises me how much I like it. Awesome. So I think you know, I'll be interested to hear what you think when we get back in January. Cool. Well, guys, thanks for jumping on the show. Uh, everyone that commented along and followed along uh flame beacon don't worry if you miss wednesday stream you can always go catch our past streams just click the videos button or check out our youtube channel there's tons of good ones in there and uh code of comics thanks for the kind words about the stream uh wednesday we'll be back at 2 p.m pacific Corey hoover will be hosting with a the crew they're gonna be playing donkey kong country on the super nintendo uh while everyone runs amok because it's the wednesday before thanksgiving so uh, that's all for this week. Make sure you click follow here on Twitch, and uh, we'll see you guys on Wednesday. And thanks to our special guest, Ted Price, for coming in and filling in, crashing Brian into our show entirely. So My pleasure is always to do that. All right, guys. We'll see you on Wednesday. Corey will see you on Wednesday. I'll see you next week on Monday. Have a good one. Have a happy Thanksgiving. See you soon.